will uh, mute as it, as we get started. Uh, we'll, uh, good afternoon, and I call the Committee on Education and Labor to order and thank my colleagues for being here today. Uh, before we begin, we have, um, uh, would like to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the passing of a member of our committee, uh, Representative Wright of Texas. Uh, regrettably, he battled COVID after surviving cancer and joined the over 450,000 Americans who have succumbed to the disease uh, during this difficult time for so many in our communities. Uh, we need to do everything we can uh, to make sure this doesn't happen. I'll yield to the uh, ranking member if you'd like to say anything prior to the moment of silence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to take a moment to honor Representative Ron Wright. He was a beloved men member of this committee. His work ethic, dedication, patriotism, and passion for public service who started long before he was a member of Congress when he worked as a congressional staffer, will leave a lasting mark on all of us for years to come. Thank you for having this moment of silence for him. Thank you, and we'll now observe a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, we meet today for several purposes. Uh, first, we wanna introduce our new members to the committee on both sides of the aisle. Then we'll adopt our committee rules and procedure for the 117th Congress. Uh, then we need to approve subcommittee chairs and ranking members, as well as approve assignment of members to subcommittees. Fourth, we need to share the committee oversight plan for the 117th Congress with all the committee members and the chair announces that any requests for recorded votes may be ruled pursuant to rule 11 of the rules of the house of representatives pursuant to rule 11 the chair may recess the committee at any point uh, at this point uh, while a roll call is not uh, necessary to establish a quorum for official for official proceedings conducted remotely or with remote participation the committee has made it a practice Whenever there is an official proceeding with remote participation for the clerk to call the roll to help make clear who is present at the start of proceedings. Uh, members should say their name before announcing that they're present. This helps the clerk and also helps those watching the platform and the live stream who may experience a few seconds delay. Uh, this time the uh, clerk will call the roll. Chairman Scott. Um, Representative Scott is present. Mr. Grijalva. Present. If you could say, if you could state your name before you say present. Uh, Raul Grijalva, present. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Courtney. Joe Courtney is present. Mr. Sablon. Ilili Sablon is present. Ms. Wilson. Ms. Wilson is present. Ms. Bonamici. Suzanne Bonamici is present. Mr. Takano. Mark Takano is present. Ms. Adams. Alma Adams is present. Mr. Desaunier. Desaunier present. Mr. Norcross. Don Norcross is here. Ms. Jayapal. Pramila Jayapal is present. Mr. Morelli. Mr. Morelli is present.
Miss Wild. Wild is present. Mrs. McBath. Lucy McBath, present. Mrs. Hayes. Johanna Hayes is present. Mr. Levin. Andy Levin, present. Ms. Omar. Elhan Omar, present. Ms. Stevens. Kaylee Stevens is present. Ms. Ledger Fernandez. Teresa Leger Fernandez is present. Mr. Jones. Present. Ms. Manning. Kathy Manning is present. Mr. Mervan. Frank Mervan is present. Mr. Bowman. Jamal Bowman is present. Mr. Pocan. Mark Pocan is present. Mr. Castro. Joaquin Castro present. Ms. Cheryl. Is that Michelle Mike Cheryl? Cheryl is present. Oh, sorry. Mr. Yarmouth. Yarmouth is present. Mr. Espayat. Mrs. Fox. Mrs. Fox is present. Did you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I was just trying to find you. <laughs> Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Joe gotcha. Wilson is present. Mr. Thompson. Uh, Gigi Thompson present. Mr. Wahlberg. Wahlberg present. Mr. Grothman. Glenn Grothman's present. Ms. Stefanik. Stefanik present. Mr. Allen. Uh, Mr. Allen is present. Mr. Banks. Mr. Comer. Mr. Comer? Here. Mr. Fulcher? Mr. Keller? Keller is here. Mr. Murphy? Mrs. Miller Meeks. Mary Nett Miller Meeks. Mr. Burgess. Burgess Owens is here. Mr. 
Mr. Good? Bob Good is here. Mrs. McLean? Mr. McLean is present. Mrs. Harshbarger? Diana Harshbarger is present. Mrs. Miller? Mary Miller present. Mrs. Sparks? Victoria Sparks present. Mr. Fitzgerald? Mr. Cawthorn? Mrs. Steele? Steele present. Mr. Chairman, this concludes the roll call. Thank you. Thank you. A quorum of uh, 27 being present, of at least 27 being present. I want to welcome all returning and new members to the committee to our full committee organizational meeting for the 117th Congress. Uh, as this is an entirely remote uh, meeting pursuant to House Resolution 8 and applicable regulations, I'm going to go over the process and procedures pertaining to this meeting. First, I ask that all microphones be kept muted to avoid unnecessary background, uh, background noise. Uh, as a general rule, staff will mute a member who has forgotten to mute himself or herself to avoid unnecessary background noise throughout the proceedings. Members are responsible for unmuting themselves when they are uh, recognized to speak or when they wish to seek recognition. I ask uh, all members to please identify themselves before they speak. Members shall only be considered present in the proceedings when they are visible on camera, and they'll be considered not present when they're not visible on camera. The only exception to this is if they're experiencing technical difficulties and inform the committee staff of such difficulty. However, members must be visible on camera to count to a quorum and to vote, and that's according to the rules, so there's no exception to that. Members are not permitted to participate in multiple committee proceedings simultaneously. House rules have deemed this as critical to ascertain member attendance and official proceedings conducted remotely with or, um, or with remote participation. If a member is experiencing technical difficulties, they should notify committee staff immediately by phone, email, or chat messaging function in the proceeding. Phone assistance will always be available throughout the duration of the proceeding with remote participation and staff contact information was distributed by the clerk with instructions uh, for the meeting and that they will be available to assist members throughout the proceeding. Any chat or mess messaging function available on WebEx is limited to use for technical or logistical support only and it will be excluded from public video stream and will not be considered part of the committee record. It is, however, visible to all participants in the proceeding, including members and staff on both sides of the aisle. So please do not use the chat or messaging function for anything other than technical or logistical support. It will not be used uh, to note a presence or attendance or to seek recognition. The remote platform is open one hour before the official proceedings begin. So I encourage members to join in any meeting well before the meeting starts with the camera and microphone on to do a check with the host before the proceedings begin. Members are advised that they, as soon as they join the software platform, everything they say or do is public and may be live streamed even before the official proceedings begin. Therefore, members are also advised that after the camera and microphone check, they should mute themselves to avoid background noise and inadvertent broadcast. Participants on the software platform are, are limited to those included on the, on the participatory list um, shared by the committee clerk in advance of the meeting. Permitted staff should always keep microphones muted and video cameras off. Uh, this, is entirely, this is an entirely remote proceeding 
And as such, the committee's hearing room is technically officially closed. Members who choose to sit with their individual devices in the hearing room must wear headphones to avoid feedback, echoes, and distortion resulting from more than one person on the soft set software platform sitting in the same room. Members are also expected to, to adhere to social distancing and, self, and safe healthcare guidelines, including the use of masks, hand sanitizer, and wiping down areas both before and after their presence in the hearing room. All official proceedings will be live streamed on the committee's website and the public and press will have real-time access to the proceedings in this matter. Proper attire is expected by members participating remotely as if in person in the committee room. Backgrounds uh, on your screen should be non-political and minimally distracting. There are procedures for all members. Members are required to seek verbal recognition when they wish to speak, including for amendments, motions, points of order, and other procedures where timeliness is a factor, and the chair will, re will provide reasonable latitude. Members should state your name when you seek recognition and why you seek recognition. For example, unmute your or turn on your microphone and say, Mr. Chairman, this is Bobby Scott. I seek recognition to offer an amendment. Or Mr. Chairman, this is Bobby Scott. I seek recognition to reserve a point of order. Or Mr. Chairman, this is Bobby Scott. I seek recognition to strike the last word. It is important to note that submission of an amendment by the electronic repository does not discharge a member from the requirement to seek recognition verbally in order to technically offer the amendment. Amendments must be submitted electronically to the amendment repository pursuant to the instructions and the notice of amendment process that was distributed to all committee offices by the clerk with the meeting notice. Amendments must be submitted to the repository before they can be offered at the meeting. Before and during the meeting, amendments must be distributed electronically to staff. Majority staff are responsible for then distributing amendments to majority members, and minority staff will be responsible for distributing amendments to minority members. Members are encouraged, but not required, to have an electronic device dedicated to receiving email amendments be it a laptop, iPad, tablet, phone, or other device. For those members participating remotely, this means a device separate from the one that is being used to participate on WebEx. Further details about the amendment process can be found in the notice of amendment process that was distributed to all committee offices by the clerk with the meeting notice. Now on voting, members must be visible on screen in order to vote. There are no exceptions to this. Moreover, there needs to be a verbal vote so that the clerk and the official reporter stenographer can hear it. A thumbs up or thumbs down without a verbal note will not suffice. Members should say their name when voting. For example, Mr. Mr. Chairman Scott votes aye. This helps the clerk and also helps those watching the platform and live stream who may be experiencing a few seconds delay. If the clerk has visual confirmation of the member voting, the clerk will repeat the name and the way the member voted and move on. If the clerk heard the member speak but does not have visual confirmation or saw but did not hear the member, the clerk will ask for the vote again. The clerk must have visual confirmation of the member speaking while they are voting. If the clerk does not hear or see the member or does not get the vote from that member, the clerk will move on to the next member. The chair may remind uh, members to turn on their uh, the chair may remind members to turn on their microphones and speak their name when voting. Now, submissions for the record. Members who wish to submit materials for the record may do so by emailing submissions to the um, website that you were given. It's um, ed, ed and labor dot markups at mail dot house dot gov, preferably in Microsoft Word for, format by the end of the day today, February 8th, 2021. Uh, we have a timer in order to ensure the committee's five minute rule is adhered to. Staff will be keeping track of time using the committee's field timer. The timer will appear in its own thumbnail picture and will be named 001 underscore timer. Uh, there will not be a one minute remaining warning, so the field timer will sound its alarm when time is up. Members asked, asked to wrap up promptly when their time 
has expired. I know that's a lot to go through, but I'm confident that we'll have a successful meeting just as we've had successful hearings and meeting in the last Congress, and so your cooperation is appreciated. I now recognize myself to make an opening statement. Um, as we this meeting begin, is being recorded. As we formally begin our work uh, for the 117th Congress, I want to express my commitment to working with every member of the committee to achieve the goals we share, ensuring that all members and all, all people across this nation have access to a quality education, good paying jobs, and affordable health care. We will not always agree on the path of achieving these goals, but I hope we will agree to work in good faith and follow evidence and research in developing policies that will improve the lives of the people we serve. This committee has the authority and responsibility to address many of the urgent issues facing our communities today. First and foremost, we must do everything in our power to provide our children, students, educators, workers, and families with the relief to get through the COVID-19 pandemic. We have a duty, we have a duty to improve the quality and we, the qual, we have the duty to improve the quality of life and, and um, of, of individuals and to lower the cost of our education system from early childhood education to college and career. We also have the duty to uh, build back, to help build back our economy that lifts hardworking families out of poverty and supports the middle class. We also have a duty to ensure access to affordable health care for people across the country, particularly those with pre-existing conditions. And finally, we have a responsibility to ensure that our laws are properly, properly enacted and enforced. The committee will conduct vigorous oversight to ensure that departments, agencies, programs, and statutes under our jurisdiction are executed in an effective, efficient, and transparent manner, as well as follow congressional intent in their scope, activities, and operations. As our country continues to face unprecedented challenges, we must recognize that securing urgent relief for our communities, passing meaningful legislation, and conducting vigorous oversight will require us to work together. And as chairman, I work, uh, I, as chairman, I look forward to working with each and every one of you to find meaningful solutions for the people across the country. And now I'd like to welcome and introduce the new majority members of the committee, Committee's Democratic members uh, reflect a broad cross-section of America. They include attorneys, educators, business owners, organizers, local leaders who have served diverse communities across the country. Their expertise and experience will be invaluable for our committee's efforts to respond to the pandemic and ensure that everyone in this country can succeed. Uh, Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez represents New Mexico's third congressional district. Before coming to Congress, uh, she worked as an attorney and advocate and helped build schools, rural health clinics, broadband, bus broadband businesses, affordable housing, and critical infrastructure for New Mexico. Congressman Mondaire Jones represents New, uh, New York's 17th Congressional District. Before coming to Congress, he worked as a litigator in private practice where he was awarded the Legal Aid Society of New York. Uh, he was, a, he was honored by the Legal Aid Society of New York for his pro bono service, investigating claims of employment discrimination and helping families defrauded during the Great Recession uh, to recover funds. Congresswoman Kathy Manning represents North Carolina's sixth congressional district. Before coming to Congress, she worked to expand access to early childhood education, college scholarships, and workforce development through the United Way, University of North Carolina at Greensburg and other and Greensboro and other nonprofit organizations. Congressman Frank Mervin represents Indiana's first congressional district. Before coming to Congress, he served as the township trustee for the North Township, Indiana, for North Township, Indiana for over 15 years. Congressman Jamal Bowman represents New York's 16th congressional district. Before coming to Congress, Dr. Bowman founded and served as a former principal of the Cornerstone Academy for Social Action, a public middle school in East Chester, Bronx. <clears throat> Congressman Mark Pocan is a returning committee member who has represented Wisconsin's second congressional district since the 113th Congress. Before coming to Congress, he represented, uh, he, he served in the Wisconsin State Assembly and has been a small business owner, union member, 
and longtime public servant. Congress, Congresswoman Mikey, Sher Mikey Sherrill represents New, uh, New Jersey's 11th district. She previously served as assistant U.S. attorney in New Jersey and spent almost 10 years on active duty in the United States Navy. Congressman John, John Yarmouth is a returning committee member who has represented Kentucky's third congressional district since the 110th Congress. He's previously led a successful career as a publisher and newspaper editor. And Congressman Adriano Espiat is a returning committee member who has represented New York's 13th Congressional District since the 115th Congress. He is the first Dominican American to serve in the House Representative. Uh, he served in the New York State Senate before coming to Congress. And um, I'll now yield to the um, distinguished ranking member, the gentlelady from North Carolina, to make an opening statement and to introduce new uh, Republican members. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanna congratulate you on retaining your role as chair of the House Education Labor Committee. I'm confident that our positive working relationship in years past can serve as a benchmark for future bipartisan achievements as we hit the ground running this Congress. I also welcome our new and returning members on both sides of the dais I look forward to working with all of you as we begin our official committee work for the 117th Congress. I've always believed that this is the best committee in Congress, not only because we have so many great members, but also because we address some of the most pressing issues facing American students, workers, and families today, especially in the face of a public health emergency. Our work on this committee is more important than ever as we continue to combat COVID-19 and help hardworking Americans, small businesses and schools recover. The pandemic's challenges, while unprecedented, demanded congressional action to help Americans suffering from the health and economic consequences of the coronavirus. In fact, many of the members in this room played an integral role in getting the Bipartisan Families First Coronavirus Response Act, the CARES Act, and the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act to President Trump's desk for signature, delivering much needed relief to American families. In times of economic prosperity, as well as in times of crisis, Congress should work to ensure that the federal government meets its obligations to the to the American people. But as we work to address the challenges of this problem, I want to remind my colleagues of the words so aptly written by the Wall Street Journal, quote, government's role in this crisis should be to address a genuine short-term hardship, not to permanently expand the size of government and the burden on taxpayers, end quote. Well, I'm proud of this committee's bipartisan accomplishments such as strengthening federal efforts to support older Americans through the Older Americans Act. I do have major concerns about the precedent that has already been set for this Congress. Just last week, Democrats silenced the voices of every Republican member of the committee, including every freshman member here and their constituents by unilaterally deciding to bring the National Apprenticeship Act of 2021 to the House floor without committee consideration. All legislation deserves a proper, thorough, and bipartisan examination, which is why the House has long established procedures to do just that. Those procedures respect the majority and minority and ensure that both sides are represented. Moving that bill or any others without a markup is an affront to the rights of the majority. Tomorrow, we're being asked to consider broad sweeping legislation that will impact nearly every facet of our society. What's worse, we, we received the bill just about one hour ago, a little over an hour ago. Which, and that bill includes significant and partisan policy proposals. This kind of rush and sloppy legislating sets a troubling trend. One I hope is not indicative of the way the majority intends to legislate. 
It's now my pleasure to introduce the new faces on our side of the dais. As we spent some time getting to know each other and talking about the work of the committee, I've been impressed with the level of enthusiasm my new members have shown. I'm pleased to introduce Representative Marionette Miller Meeks of Iowa, Representative Burgess Owens of Utah, Representative Bob Good of Virginia, Representative Lisa McLean of Michigan, Representative Diana Horsbarger of Tennessee, Representative Mary Miller of Illinois, Representative Victoria Sparks of Indiana, Representative Scott Fitzgerald of Wisconsin, Representative Madison Cawthorn, a fellow North Carolinian, and Representative Michelle Steele of California. One member who is not new to Congress or the committee for that matter, but I'm excited to have rejoining us is Representative Joe Wilson from South Carolina. It's also a pleasure to welcome our returning Republican members with their proven records of legislative accomplishment. I know we will all benefit from their continued service on the committee. Mr. Thompson, Mr. Wahlberg, Mr. Grothman, Ms. Stefanik, Mr. Allen, Mr. Banks, Mr. Comer, Mr. Fulcher, Mr. Keller, Dr. Murphy. Mr. Chairman, let me close by saying I very much appreciate your efforts to make this a model committee last Congress. And I'll join you in those efforts again this Congress. To do so, we all must follow the rules of this body <clears throat> to act respectfully toward each other and our witnesses. All of us on the Republican side of the dais are committed to doing the work of this committee in a respectful and cooperative manner. I look forward to having this committee continue to be an example of how to disagree, but not be disagreeable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Fox. And we're gonna do everything we can to keep the appropriate decorum. Uh, I think there's some committees uh, that I think you and I would agree by any objective standard would constitute an embarrassment and we certainly don't want to join that um, that category. And so it, uh, we'll, we'll do everything we can to maintain the appropriate decorum and we appreciate uh, your cooperation in that. Now, pursuant to uh, House Rule um, 11, the first order of business is the adoption of the committee rules of procedure for the 170th Congress. A copy of the proposed rules uh, was distributed to each of you electronically in advance. And let me summarize briefly how the rules differ from those in force uh, in the 116th uh, Congress. Uh, first, the um, rules have been changed throughout simply to reflect the fact that we're in the 117th Congress. Rules have been changed throughout to eliminate the need for paper copies of documents, filing, and other written items so that they can be, uh, you can comply by distributing them electronically. The committee rules have been changed throughout to eliminate the need for filings and review of roll call votes to occur in a physical space in the committee uh, because we are uh, many times going to be working remotely. A uh, new rule two has been added to affirm that the chair uh, shall enforce decorum, including with regard to actions that impact health and safety of members and staff and anyone else present and the remainder of the rules have been renumbered accordingly. And as uh, Dr. Fox and I have just said, we'll be working together to try to maintain uh, that proper decorum. Uh, rule four has been changed to clarify the an existing committee practice, which is that the chair and ranking member when sitting ex officio on a subcommittee do not count as a quorum. Um, that has been, uh, that was a practice, but the question kept coming up. So we thought we'd put it in the rule to make sure that everybody was on the same page. Rule five has been changed to permit subcommittee meetings or hearings during a recess or adjournment of the House of Representatives without special notice. This is to conform with the calendar of the 117th Congress that specifically sets committee work periods as distinct from periods when the House is in session. There are two items that are not changes, uh, but do merit uh, highlighting. The first is the ability under Rule 13 of the chair to give priority to amendments that have been filed 
with the committee at least 24 hours prior to the committee or subcommittee meeting. This provision merits highlighting because the committee encourages the use of a roster process and will give priority consideration and markup meetings to amendments appropriately pre-filed under Rule 13. For the new members, this means that in a markup uh, meetings, we will hear and debate pre-filed amendments first. Amendments that are not pre-filed will still be permitted, but will be considered only after all of the pre-filed amendments have been considered. Second is Rule 18, which states that the chair will not request uh, will not request to have scheduled any commemorative or honorific or uh, honorific bill or resolution for consideration under suspension of the rules. The chair advises members that they may still introduce such legislation and House leadership can take and can take it up on its own volition through suspension of the rules, unanimous consent or other special rules, but members may seek to move such legislation through the consent calendar or discharge the calendar. Uh, members may also utilize opportunities on the House floor, such as recognition, um, such recognition as one minutes, five minutes, or extension of remarks, uh, but it will not uh, take up committee time. I now yield to the distinguished um, uh, ranking member. Any um, comments she may have about the rules? Dr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman for this opportunity to respond to the majority's rules proposals. And I appreciate your willingness to work with the minority on these issues. The language we use reflects our priorities and what we as a committee value. I believe the term labor contained in the committee's name sends a message to the people we represent that we're interested only in serving some professions. I thereby, I therefore object to the committee's name remaining the Committee on Education and Labor. There's another word notably that is missing from the committee's subcommittee name, the dreaded T word. Thank you for your continued practice of acknowledging the worthiness of all educational pursuits. A baccalaureate degree is not the only pathway to prosperity and we must continue to honor all education programs, including professional education, apprenticeship programs, and other forms of higher learning. So thank you. Another issue I'd like to address is ample notice for markups and hearings. For this committee to have thoughtful and productive hearings and markups, we need adequate time to prepare for these events. Therefore, I reiterate the importance of providing members ample notice for hearings and markups. While the rules establish the minimum notice requirement, a model committee would work more collaboratively and ensure that all members can do their job effectively. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, the other members that wish to be heard. If if not, let me respond on the notice, um, uh, Dr. Fox. We're going to we, we'll give as much notice as we can, even informal notice. Sometimes when you give formal notice, you get um, uh, we're not able to give formal notice that we're completely clear when a, a committee um, meeting will take place. But we will give you advance notice and even further advance notice as to issues that we may be taking up in the future. So that, as you have um, pointed out, it will give both sides the opportunity to properly properly prepare. So uh, the point is well taken, and uh, we'll do the best we can on on not only official notice but also unofficial notice, so that um, uh, you will be uh, uh, ready for preparation. We appreciate other... all we appreciate all gestures, Mr. Chair. Okay. Are there other um, uh, comments on the? On the rules, if not, the question is the adoption of the rules. All in favor of the rules will say aye. 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 All, all, aye. Opposed, all opposed will say no. 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 As appear to have it. No. No. As appear to have it. As have it in the 
rules are adopted. The Mr. Chair. Next next item of business. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yep. Yeah, um that, uh, Ms. Wilson. Uh I, I only see one uh of the minority members. Are the others on camera or are they not required to? Uh, on on WebEx, uh everybody's there, but you can only see a few at a time. I, I mean, as they were introduced, we saw I saw our members. I, I haven't seen anyone except Chairman right. Fox, Chairwoman Fox. Is that uh, okay? They're, 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 they're there, but uh, WebEx doesn't give you the. Um, um, That's not true, Mr. Chairman. This is Susan Wild. Oh, wait a minute. It, yeah, if you go, yeah, you you can go to on the upper right hand corner. You have layout, and right. you can get the um, uh, what's what's called the um grid. Right uh view and you can see everybody everybody will be there and there are also, also multiple pages so they're, they're there right mr chairman there's an arrow uh, to the right of your screen if you just click the arrow uh representative wilson you'll continue to see uh, the members in the group right um the um next um order of business is the subcommittee chairs ranking members and um, subcommittee assignments. Uh, we'll now, um, the next order of business is our subcommittee chairs and ranking members, a copy of rosters of full committee members, as well as subcommittees listing chairs and ranking members was distributed uh, just a, in a few minutes so that everybody has that list. Um, each side um, has done their own and we are um, confirming the actions pursuant to House Democratic Caucus rules. The full committee vice chair uh, elected will be Representative Bowman of New York, who is elected by vote of the Democratic uh, Committee Caucus. He brings his dedication to education and social action to the committee, and I look forward to his role as vice chair. The chairs will be uh, for Early Childhood Elementary and Secondary Education. The chair, once again, will be Representative Sablon, who is serving a sixth term, sixth term on the committee. He has long been a champion of educational needs of the Northern Mariana Islands, specifically in U.S. territories and outlined areas generally, in addition to um, early childhood for, 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 for everyone, but he's taken a particular focus on the territories. For the subcommittee on higher education and workforce investment, the chair will be Representative Wilson, who is uh, serving her fifth term on the committee and brings her experience as an elementary school principal and a member of the Miami Dade School Board uh, to the committee. Last Congress, she was chair of the subcommittee on health, employment, labor, and pensions. For the subcommittee on civil rights and human services, the chair once again is Representative Bonamici was also in her fifth term in Congress. She's a longtime advocate for uh, equity in education and for policies and for policies that provide workers with the skills uh, they need to succeed in today's workforce. For the subcommittee on workforce protections, the chair is once again Representative Adams. She's in her fourth term on uh, the committee and brings her decades of experience as a college professor to the committee. And finally, the Subcommittee on Health, Employment, Labor, and Pensions. The chair is Representative Desaunier, who is uh, in his fourth term on the committee. He brings his experience as a small business owner to the committee, where he champions opportunities and supports for working families. I look forward to the leadership on the of our new subcommittee chairs will bring to the committee and now yield to the distinguished ranking member any remarks that she may have to introduce subcommittee ranking members. Dr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The ranking member of the subcommittee on early childhood, elementary and secondary education is Mr. Owens. The ranking member of the subcommittee on higher education and workforce investment is Mr. Murphy. The ranking member of the subcommittee on health, employment, labor and pensions is Mr. Allen. 
The ranking member of the Subcommittee on Workforce Protections is Mr. Keller. And finally, the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Civil Rights and Human Services is Mr. Fulcher. I, I wanted to know it, uh, one member who came in after uh, everyone was introduced that I noticed name came out, Mr. Chairman, uh, was Dr. Murphy. I'm not sure how many more of our members came in, but uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. And so at this point, I move that the vice chair and the list of subcommittee chairs and ranking members, as just announced, um, and uh, the uh, members of the, um, uh, that the ranking members and committee chairs, ranking members and vice chair uh, as set forth uh, be approved. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor will say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the vice chair and subcommittee chairs and ranking members have been approved. We'll now approve the subcommittee assignments. Once again, a copy of the roster of the full committee, subcommittee, full committee, as well as each subcommittee was distributed in advance. And uh, does the ranking member have any comments on the subcommittees? No, sir. Okay, uh, then I move that the subcommittee assignments as set forth in the rosters be approved. All in favor will say aye. 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 All opposed will say no. Ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the roster is approved. Uh, without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. We'll now turn to the committee oversight plan for the 117th Congress pursuant to clause two house rule 10, the chair is responsible for preparing in consultation with the ranking member an oversight plan for the 117th Congress. The copy of the plan must be provided to each member of the subcommittee. Committee members shall have seven days to review the oversight plan and submit if they so desire supplemental minority or additional or dissenting views. The chair is then responsible for submitting the oversight plan to the Committee on Oversight and Reform and the Committee on House Administration, together with any supplemental minority additional or dissenting views submitted by any member of the committee within the designated time. Having prepared an oversight committee, having prepared an, a committee oversight plan and consulted with the ranking member, a copy of that plan was distributed to each of you in advance. Members shall have seven. Uh, calendar days to review the plan and submit supplemental minority additional or dissenting views. Um, that would be by um, midnight, before midnight on February 14th. I shall then submit the plan with any views received within the allotted time frame to the Committee on Oversight and Reform and the Committee on House Administration as required by the rule. Uh, without objection, the, pl the plan is considered as read. And let me um, uh, address the main features of the plan. The committee on oversight, uh, the, the committee oversight plan first specifies the rules of the House of Representatives for the 117th Congress that lay out the requirements for the plan, delineate the jurisdiction of the committee and provide the general oversight responsibilities of standing committees. Uh, pursuant to clause 2D2F of rule 10 of the rules of the House of Representatives, which was adopted this Congress, the plan affirms the committee's commitment to addressing issues of equity in areas of education, labor, and health. The plan then explains the oversight is a constitutional prerogative, an important responsibility of Congress, and a core objective of this committee. It lists some of the oversight and investigatory techniques that the committee will engage in, as it states that the committee will conduct aggressive oversight to ensure the departments, agencies, programs, and statutes within our jurisdiction are operated and executed in, a, in an effective, efficient, transparent manner, as well as follow congressional intent in their scope activities and operations. The plan then identifies broad areas for oversight and investigation that are priorities of the 117th Congress, including, but not limited to the following. 
in the area of education, the implementation of Every Student Succeeds Act, the Department, the Department of Education's re-regulation and implementation of the borrower defense to repayment rules, the Department of Education Office of Federal Student Aid's procurement of the next-gen loan servicing platform and its policies regarding for-profit colleges, the, administ the administration of federal financial aid programs, the public service loan forgiveness program, and the Office of Federal Student Food Office of Federal Student Aid's preparation to uh, resume collecting student loan payments and monitoring of servicer legal and regulatory compliance after payments resume. In the area of labor, the Department of Labor's training and enforcement pro programs, uh, including apprenticeship programs, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration's actions impacting health and safety standards, the Wage and Hour Division's actions regarding overtime pay, workers' rights to retain tips, child labor protections under the Fair Labor Standards Act, and the Mine Safety and Health Administration standards and policies regarding black lung disease. The Department of Labor's Workforce Development Program, including programs under the Workforce, workforce Innovative and Opportunity Act, WIOA. Uh, provisions in the Immigration and Nationality Immigration and Nationality Act that protect the wages and working conditions of both US and foreign workers, the National Labor Relations Board and its enforcement of the National Labor Relations Act, retirement security and the multi-employer pension crisis, the implementation of workers' compensation programs, including assessing the adequacy of COVID-19 compensation coverage under the Federal Employees' Compensation Act and the solvency of the Black Lung Disability Trust Fund and the international labor issues and management and operations of the International Labor Affairs uh, Bureau. In the area of healthcare, uh, the previous administration's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the safe reopening of schools, the inequities that prevent individuals and communities from accessing needed, needed healthcare. In other areas, the administration's enforcement of laws protecting the rights and students, rights of students and workers with disabilities, the implementation of civil rights laws pertaining to education, labor, and employment, and healthcare to ensure that such protections are sustained and robustly enforced, community support programs and federal and federal funding targeted to improving equity for vulnerable populations to ensure they achieve that goal, and the Department of Agriculture's administration of child nutrition programs. The plan also reserves the right to review and investigate general legislative, administrative, and regulatory issues affecting our jurisdiction. I now yield to the distinguished ranking member, Dr. Fox, for any uh, remarks she may have about the oversight plan. Uh, Dr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's uh, quite a long list you outlined. <laughs> Uh, the Amer I hope you'll go after this administration as aggressively as you went after the last one. Well, hopefully they won't need <laughs> Yeah, well, the American people deserve an open, accountable government that works efficiently, effectively, and in adherence to the law. We have an obligation to use our constitutional authority to ensure that laws are enforced properly. Taxpayer money is spent wisely in accordance with congressional intent and government policy does not harm the American people. As I said last Congress, oversight may not be glamorous or exciting, but it is important to be diligent, thoughtful, and responsible in its implementation. It is equally important to be objective. If the committee's work is to be effective, then it is important for all members to keep open minds, examine potential problems, assess the actual facts and evidence, and finally determine if there are concerns that need to be addressed. I look forward to working with our majority colleagues to ensure that agencies under this committee's jurisdiction are being good stewards of hardworking taxpayer dollars and are implementing the laws Congress passed with fidelity. We appreciate the opportunity to submit Republican views on this topic and we'll provide them soon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Um, thank you. Uh, does any uh, member wish to be recognized to discuss the committee's oversight plan? 
If not, um, the members shall have seven calendar days to submit uh, their views as indicated before. Uh, without objection, this committee staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to reflect the action of the committee in adopting the resolution embodying our rules of procedure. Um, without objection, and this concludes the order of today's business. Once again, I want to welcome all of the returning and especially our new members to the committee and look forward to working with you for the benefit of our constituents of our great nation. And yield if she has any further comments, the ranking member or any other mem member before uh, before we conclude. I, we I, do have, I do have Dr. one Fox. question. I do have one question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you went over a, a very lengthy uh, procedural, uh, I don't know what to call it, but um, it was very, very lengthy. Is it your intention to do that at the beginning of every meeting? Because if so, members may want to know when to appear <laughs> at the meeting. Uh, no, hopefully um, that would alert them to what the procedures are, that we would not have to repeat that at every meeting. Well, I certainly hope not. Uh, uh, so <laughs> thank you very much for clarifying that. It was okay. it was not clear to us that that was a one time operation. So uh, well, well, we can uh, we'll, we'll provide if we do if we do provide it, it'll do. be in writing so that people don't have to sit through it. OK, very good. Uh, these meetings are getting longer and longer and longer. And uh, I note that your members are sitting in their bedrooms or their kitchens or their offices. Um, and uh, we think that we should be here working, but we also have constituents to be accountable to in addition to our legislating. So the less time that we can spend on unnecessary things, the better. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. Um, without it, with that, um, without objection, uh, the committee stands adjourned and we thank everyone for their cooperation.